The I Am Discourses by the Ascended Masters St. Germain. Discourse number 27, December 24, 1933. Christmas Eve. St. Germain, Invocation Thou mighty, majestic Christ power, now grown to full stature, we salute thee by the sign of the heart and head, accepting the fullness of thy mighty power made manifest in the hearts of the students and of the people of America. We accept the fullness of the light and its illuminating presence within the heart and mind of each one surging forward with such intensity that it carries the courage and strength for everyone to make the needed conscious effort, which will enable the mighty I Am Presence to raise the atomic structure into its full ascension. Now I will step aside and let our beloved brother speak his heart. Jesus Discourse I bring you love and salutations, from many of the ascended host, some of whom you know and others of whom you are yet to know. I am the light, the way, and the truth is the Christmas bell that is still ringing throughout the field of cosmic activity. In the understanding that has been brought to you in the meaning and power of the words I am, you will find a charmed circle in which you may move untouched by human discordant operation. It is not only a matter of knowing the presence, but in practicing the presence in even the simplest activity. For as you attempt an unfamiliar experience, you many times feel timid and uncertain. But as you learn to use the I am in the solving of your desire or problem, you find growing a confidence that you can apply with a definite assurance. The students should always understand that it is in the great silence or stillness of the outer that the inner power flows in its ever-increasing accomplishment. And soon they will come to know that even as they think of their mighty source, the I Am, they will feel an increase of strength, vitality, and wisdom which will enable them to go forward with a feeling of mastery that will surely one day open wide the door through the limitations of their human creation into the vastness of their true freedom. We so often see in the heart the craving for proof, some remarkable manifestation which will strengthen them on the way. I assure you, blessed children of the light, any proof given outside of yourself is but temporary. But every step proved in and through your own conscious application is an eternal accomplishment. And as you continue to gain the mastery through your self-conscious application, you are not only accomplishing the things in hand, but you are raising the consciousness until presently you will find that all barriers have gone down. It is in this manner that the door of human limitations is forever nailed back. And as my outer form was nailed to the cross, so do you, by your ascending consciousness, nail back the door of self-created limitations and feel and know your dominion. To the many students so vitally interested in making the ascension, I would urge you to use the statement often, I am the ascension in the light. This will enable your consciousness to more quickly rise out of the maya of human creation. It cannot be stressed too urgently that as you live in and accept more fully the transcendent power of the I Am Presence, you will find that not only the outer struggle ceases, but that as you have entered deeper into the light, the outer things that you have sought so earnestly will really and truly begin to seek you. Because by that time 
you will truly and fully realize the unreality of form and its transitory activity. You will then know that within you and the light about you is everything you can possibly desire, and the outer, which has seemed so important, will have lost its great binding power upon you. Then in the outer things that come to you will come joyous freedom. This is the true activity of outer things. As you become more conscious of the transcendent powers which are at your command, you will know that you can quickly draw to yourself anything you require without harming or affecting another of God's children. This truth must be established within the consciousness for conscientious souls must know this unwaveringly, so they may not at intervals find themselves wondering if it is right for them to succeed when others around them are not succeeding. For your greatest service, I assure you, is to gain the mastery and freedom for yourself. Then you are prepared to dispense the light without being affected by the human creation in which you must move. Never feel sad nor distressed if another of God's children is not ready to accept the light. For if he does not come to the light of his own choosing, it is rarely but a temporary step. As one begins to gain a conscious freedom from the body, he understands how temporal these outer things are and how unimportant. But when one enters into the universal consciousness or the great cosmic activity, one finds to enter into the light is of all importance. Then he will know the joy of the inner presence and its invincible activity for which his heart will leap with joy. Shortly before I became aware of my full mission, the statement stood out vividly before me, I am the presence that never fails or makes a mistake. This, I knew later, was the sustaining power which enabled me to be the resurrection and the life. It is unfortunate indeed that some of the scriptural statements have been clouded by human concept. Yet I am thankful indeed that many have remained unaltered. Another statement I used constantly for more than three years was, I am always the majestic power of pure love that transcends every human concept and that opens the door to me to the light within its heart. I knew later this greatly intensified my true inner vision. In response to the earnest desire within the hearts of many, I wish to say that during the years in which the scriptures seemed to have been unaware of my activity, I was going from place to place in search of the explanation of the light and presence which I felt within myself. And I assure you, beloved students, not with the ease and speed with which you are able to seek today. Those of that day in my association were joyous to receive the knowledge of those unchronicled experiences, but owing to the unusual nature of them, it was thought unwise to place them before the multitude. So it has been through the ages, when the period of transcendent experiences has begun to fade into the yesterdays, and those who followed were not sufficiently advanced to realize this truth. They have shut out from humanity glories, beautiful and wonderful. However, at this time there has come to the assistance of humanity the cosmic Christ power which became so real to me. This, through its natural impulse for expression, is steadily and surely finding its way into the hearts and minds of a large percent of mankind to the extent that great hope is present, that this activity will enable the veil of human creation to be lifted, so great numbers of humanity will see signs and wonders and feel them within their own hearts. Then they cannot be turned aside from the truth by human doubts and fears. I spent some time in Arabia, Persia, and Tibet, and closed my pilgrimage in India, where I met the beloved master who had then made the ascension, although I did not know it at the time. Through the power of his radiation, revelation after revelation came to me, 
through which I was given expressions or statements that enabled me to hold steady the outer activity of my mind until it no longer had power to disturb or retard me. It was then the full glory of my mission was revealed and the eternal cosmic record it was to make, which was to be established at that time for the blessing and enlightenment of the humanity that was to follow. You might be interested to know that this became an active cosmic record, which is quite different from any other record made, in that it contains within it and does today the forward urge or impulse for which the human mind was and is a magnet. This accounts for the expressions and statements I gave forth becoming more and more vivid through the centuries, and with the forward impulse of that activity, assisted by other powerful rays of radiation focused upon the earth, it will enable a great number of humanity to become so anchored in the truth and its conscious application that a transcendent accomplishment will be achieved. There is no one single step so vitally important as getting before mankind the knowledge of the I Am, their source of life and its transcendent power, which can be brought into the conscious use of the individual. Within three years, it will be amazing how this simple yet all-powerful truth will have spread among humanity. For all who will think upon it, practice its presence, and consciously direct its energy through the power of divine love, will find a new world of peace, love, health, and prosperity open to them. Those who understand applying the knowledge of the I Am need never, never be beset by inharmony or disturbance in their homes, worlds, or activities. For it is only by a lack of acknowledgement and acceptance of the full power of this mighty presence that individuals allow human concepts and creations to disturb them. The student should constantly look within his human self and see what habits or creations are there that need to be plucked out and disposed of. For only by refusing to any longer allow habits of judging, condemning, and criticizing to exist can he be free. The true activity of the student is only to perfect his own world, and he cannot do it as long as he sees imperfection in the world of another, of God's children. You have been given marvelous statements to harmoniously govern your life and world. Apply them with determination and you will succeed. Another correction many of you wish me to make is this. I did not say on the cross, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? But I did say, Father, how thou hast glorified me. And I did receive into the glories with me the brother who was on my right on the cross. There are a number of these beloved students whom I knew personally at the time of the crucifixion, and in giving this message forth to them, I feel like talking to old friends, for in that great ascended presence, centuries are but an incident, and only as we come into contact with human events is there a cognizance of time. Beloved students who are so earnestly seeking the light, Try to feel yourselves held in my loving embrace. Try to feel yourselves clothed in that light, dazzling as the noonday sun. So anchor within your consciousness the feeling of your ability to make the ascension that each day brings you closer and closer to the fullness of its realization. Cut loose all things of earth that bind you. Know that in the love, wisdom, and power which you accept from your mighty I Am Presence is the power that does this transcendent service. Always remind yourselves that God in you is your certain victory. The I Am Presence which beats your heart is the light of God that never fails, and that your power, by the acceptance of this presence, to loose its energy and direct it, is limitless. It is my great joy and privilege to continue in association with my beloved brother, St. Germain, 
in pouring forth through my conscious radiation a definite assistance to the students who can accept the instruction of St. Germain. This will continue during the entire year of 1934. Do not misunderstand me. I am pouring out to all mankind, but in this radiation to the students, I am privileged to give a special service. With my love, I unfold you. With my light, I clothe you. With my energy, I sustain you, that you may go forth dauntless in your quest for happiness and the perfecting of yourselves and your world. I trust this will bring a radiation that you may feel at will throughout the year and that your attainment may bring you boundless joy. I am the enlightening, revealing presence manifest with full power. Jesus the Christ. Saint Germain, I wish to convey my unfolding love as a gift to each of the beloved students, for love is the greatest gift that can be given.